Hey guys, it's Frank and Kevin from Cruising with Wheels. Today we have another exciting episode of our Q and A. Like you said in the beginning, Frank, this is another episode of Q&A. We're right. getting a great response from I Q&A. Know. People are leaving comments, asking questions, everywhere from Facebook to private email to YouTube. It's all coming in. So I think we're going to keep up with us, aren't That's we? That's right. Uh, and we want you to send us your questions. Uh, you can find our contact information at the end of this video uh, on what's called the end card. Mm -hmm. That's where they can hit that subscribe button. Right. Right. And we're doing Q&As twice a month on Thursdays, every other Thursday. And you also can find our contact information in the description below. And if you're having a hard time finding either of those places, our email address is Cruising with wheels at rochester.rr.com. <laughs> We're also on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Right. And you can also interact with other cruisers on Frank's Cruise Chat. That's right. On Facebook, I have a private uh, group called Cruise Chat, and everyone's welcome. So, now that we got all that business out of the way, let's get right to the first question. And the first question comes from Katie. And she asked, can I store my luggage under the bed in my cabin? And this is a popular question. It is. Because people, you know, those cabins are small. I mean, really, they're small. And the last thing you want is to have your luggage, your empty luggage, in your way, in a corner, tripping over it. So yeah, where do you put your, your luggage once you've unpacked in your cabin? Well, uh, we can't answer this question blatantly right. with a yes or no. So in some cases uh, on the cruise ships, we've been able to, in most cases, we've been able to store our luggage underneath the bed. Mm -hmm. And usually what we do is we nest everything That's together. Right. So it's in one case, boop, that's Under the right. bed it goes. Because the tote bag fits into <clears throat> the little carry-on, which then fits into the 24-inch, which then That's fits into... That's what nesting means, yes, doesn't well, it? Yes, absolutely. Like well, those Russian dolls. Like Russian dolls, exactly. But a lot of people might not know when we say nesting. Those of us who've been in the luggage industry know what nesting means. And Word you... Word of the day. You, as a professional luggage I need to buy more person knows what that means. <laughs> I saw some I want to buy. <laughs> no more luggage. You guys, I found this luggage really quickly because this does pertain to this. <laughs> I found luggage that you can actually customize. Did you know oh, that? Wow. You can take your photo oh. or design it however you want and it'll be pre-printed on the luggage. I thought that would be so neat to get. So, I'm thinking about it. Oh, Lord, more luggage. <laughs> Holy moly. But in the case where you can't store it under yeah. the bed, we suggest nesting it and uh, putting it in yeah. your um, uh, closet. Mm -hmm. Or, I know on one cruise, I think what we ended up doing is we kept moving it in and out of the bathroom. Yeah. It well, all again, depends on what your cabin it, has, because each cabin might be a little right. different. Right, and for us, because uh, we're in a handicap accessible cabin, which uh, obviously is a little larger than the average cabin, uh, we're able to, maybe if we can't do under the bed or in the closet, to stick it in a corner mm -hmm. and it's out of the way. And of course, mm -hmm. it, for me, it needs to be out of the way because I'm in my wheelchair turning around and rolling around the room. Right. And the next one. It comes from Cheryl. Right. And you know what? Cheryl's on our group cruise. Cheryl is on our group cruise. So this is kind of a question that kind of relates to that, but it's a good question. It's and, an awesome question. Yes. And she said, good morning. I've checked TSA and the NCL websites. I want to bring homemade food items like jams, you know, et cetera, whatever, for a, for a gift bag. Now, this is, pertains to our gift bag on the group cruise, right. but many cruisers bring gift bags for their room stores. That's right. I can take in checked bag uh, on the plane, but NCL only says unsealed food items will not be allowed on board. 
I believe it'll be okay, but thought to check with my two go-to cruise guys. So thank you so much for this, Cheryl. Uh, this is a great yeah. question for Q and A, and frankly, something that Frank and I hadn't thought of before. Uh, so I, I want to applaud you for that yeah, because for bringing it up. You know, a lot of, we we get lots of questions all the time, and they seem to sometimes be the same question. Right. So this this was like to me, it was like. Oh, wow, I never yeah. thought of that. Um, but we already responded to Cheryl, and we wanted to share the answers that we right. gave her. Because a lot of people we have talked to online love to bring items from their hometown to give to their room steward, you know, and the, we get a lot of those questions, and of course a lot of people are like, oh, just give them cash. But mm -hmm. people like to share their home experiences. Right. So, but when you get to the food section of this it gets a little dicey so we came up with basically five reasons why we think it's not such a good idea uh and you know we do think that it's a lovely idea yes. we think that it's very personable and can be a, a great idea for maybe somebody you know right um but let's go down okay. one by one right. what's the first well the reason? first one is if you're flying in now mm. obviously you know, if you're driving or whatever, it's not an issue. But if you're flying, uh, TSA may consider your jam a possible liquid slash gel item and not allow it on the plane via your carry-on. Because you remember, TSA rules for carry-on liquids and gels is it can't be more than three point, what is it, 3.6? 311 is three ounces. Three ounces. Three ounces. But it's three. a three point something. For an actual liquid, 3.4, 3.6. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Poop point. We did a video on it. Um, I always forget what the point is. But yeah, so again, can you imagine <laughs> Get bringing, to the point. bringing your <laughs> jar of jam and it's in your carry on and they go, uh, no. And they take it and you know where it goes? In the trash. In the trash. There goes your gift bag. And I want you to consider something because you did mention that you did your due diligence and research uh, and looked on the TSA website. But very often, unfortunately, our federal workers, and this doesn't go, I'm not saying it's a bad, you know, I'm not pointing out every federal worker, but we've experienced we it, indeed. <laughs> that not everybody follows the guidelines and what it says on the website. Uh, so um, it's, it's a questionable thing. So I don't right. think it's a great idea. The second reason is at the airport, uh, it may, sh and if you put it in your check bag, this goes to if you put it in your check right. bag, it may show up as a possible bomb making material. Right. I mean, you know, remember a lot of people we, don't know that. Right, or well, think. People, because people don't think like that. But you remember when we came back from our uh, Alaska cruise, the fudge, the fudge, the chocolate fudge Kevin bought, uh, bought me from Victoria, British Columbia, they thought was C4 plastic explosives. Right. So, you, yeah, you, I know people aren't, are, it's not part of your daily life. In this day and age, they are scanning 99.9% yeah. of the checked bags right. that you wouldn't even know that they're right. scanning because they're doing it behind the right. scenes. Number three, the cruise line usually doesn't allow food that is not in a factory sealed package to be brought on board. Now, this is for many reasons right. they don't. Um, the main reason is uh, contamination right. from insects. Right. Um, now, everybody knows I bring snacks. I talk about my snack bag. But those are all store-bought, factory-sealed candies in their original packages. Mm -hmm. And they're not loose. There's no loose food. Now, the next reason um, is, for me, probably the big biggest reason uh, some people may feel very uncomfortable receiving a food, a homemade food item from somebody that they don't know. Right. Uh, and um, it's not even that that I was be majorly concerned with. It would be the fifth reason. Right. And that's some people may be allergic to whatever right. in the item you've made. Right. It's, uh, because they don't know right. what the we ingredients don't, People are. don't, A, don't know you. B, don't know how it was made in your kitchen, what ingredients are in it. Uh, and I always use the analogy of Halloween. Mm -hmm. Everyone pretty much knows that in this day and age, 
when your child gets home from trick-or-treating and mom or dad opens that candy bag and dumps it out, anything that is probably homemade that they were given like cookies or uh, Rice Krispie treats usually end up in the trash and the children are not allowed to eat some strangers homemade items. You don't know them. And even some of the candy, you know, things have happened that are pre that are, you know, packaged from the grocery store that can be tampered with. So, right. yeah. Uh, so, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> You're a sneezer today. Well, you know what it is? <laughs> I keep itching my nose, too. I think it's, uh, you know, the seasons change, the allergies It's raining in the today air. here, and that barometric pressure has shifted. I, myself, experienced massive hours of dripping. Sorry. What's the next question? Well, the next question comes from Sandra. Um, and again, it's... Got a it's, lot of papers it's, today. I know. It's about this whole... Um, the, the measles outbreaks that have been happening um, across the country, on the islands, and on cruise ships. Uh, so, again, <clears throat> Sandra was like, um, who carries proof of vaccinations with them? And do you think it might be a requirement uh, in the future for cruises? And will insurance pay should people somehow be required to be tested? Because, you know, that one ship, uh, that, that private ship from the Church of Scientology uh, that had 300 passengers on board was quarantined. Uh, uh, they were not allowed to be disembarked in St. Lucia, and they were told to head back to their home port in Curacao. And the question became, when they got back to the home port, who was going to be allowed off the ship? How were they going to test people whether they were safe? I, I don't know how to answer this because we're not doctors, so we don't know, first of all, if uh, there is such a thing as testing to find out if you've been vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, and we questioned... How would we even know if we had been vaccinated? I mean, we right. know that we well, have been. I actually, we know we have, and I actually found in my legal paperwork, you know, God, I save everything, you know that. Uh, I actually found my baptismal certificate, and on the back was my immunizations. Well, but How crazy that's is that? nice, but Who's that's really not proof. I know it's just kind it's of a just handwritten record. Your mother wrote down, right? You know, when we I, we we went to my sister and I went to the doctor, so and it was it, written on the back. But in an answer I, to your question, we don't know. And I, if you want our opinion, we're going to give you our opinion that we can't foresee them ever uh, requiring yeah. it for future cruises. Right. And um, as far as will your insurance pay for it? Who knows? That's something that we can't answer because it's going to be specific to your plan, your plan, your personal right. uh, plan. And um, I, I can't foresee an insurance company pay for right. a test to find out if you can go on a vacation. Uh, no, uh, but I will answer a question that wasn't on here, okay. which is it has to do with the same topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm sure we're probably going to get comments about this. Or, um, and it would be, uh, would the, your insurance pay for your vaccinations if you're going on a cruise and you're required to get specific vaccinations because you're going out of the country? Right. And, and in some instances it would. Right. And in some instances it wouldn't. Right. Let's say you're taking a uh, safari trip to right. Africa. Right. Right. Uh, and a lot of you know that when you come back uh, and you're getting, like, we, we just got blood work done. And that's the question they ask. Have you traveled out of the country to any African country? To any country. When I got mine, it was, did you, have oh, you really? traveled out of, yep, they've not, well, I don't, it's probably different in every area. But in, in New York, they are now asking, have you traveled out of the country? They don't even ask. Africa at, anymore. at that time, it was because of the Ebola, the Ebola that was going on. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so a lot of concerns with traveling, vaccinations, diseases, whatever. So it's a good question, Sandra, to bring up because people are concerned. Now, the next question we've been seeing a lot online, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a generalized 
question. We're going to say it's from everyone. It's from everyone. <laughs> everyone wants to know. Uh, and it was uh, that we are on a carnival cruise coming up soon, and they're all worried about not being able to dock in U.S. ports. Um, and they also want to know about the president's changing policies uh, regarding travel to Cuba. Right. So... To give them a little backstory, why the, don't you tell right, them a little... Right. Well, the first part is because uh, a federal judge uh, fined Carnival for waste dumping. And they... Uh, and at the filming of the time of the filming of today's video, uh, there was no conclusion to it. Right. And Carnival hadn't paid anything yet. Right. So they were already given warnings and whatever and fines. And Carnival had not stepped up, apparently, to do the right thing. Well, and a and after, federal judge threatened uh, them that the ships would not be allowed to dock in any U.S. ports. That and was it's the interesting, threat. It's interesting because after that came down, that decision came down, they got fined and started to be investigated by the Bahamas mm. for doing the same yeah. thing. So, yeah, so people are concerned when they hear that some federal judge is going to impose a ban on Carnival ships porting in U.S. ports. So, you know, as of this filming today, right. you know, there's been no ban, uh, you know, so it's still open-ended as to what's going to happen. I can't foresee that happening. Right. That Our would opinion a, would a, be a, that, yeah. that they're going to do whatever they got to yeah. do to stay within... Uh, the legal U framework, legal framework yeah. of being able to still go out of yeah. the United States. That ban a possible, would be devastating. A possible to them. ban would be a death blow to them in terms of the their their company. And um, now I don't know if this was specific to Carnival Cruise Line. Right. Now I have to say that what uh, um, I just thought I don't know. Did I tell you about this? That I want to do a video about. Uh, cruise corporations mm -hmm. uh, so that people know what companies, what right. cruise lines are held under the companies. That's right. Um, and so I think that even more interesting that if Carnival Cruise Line is banned from these ports, are they now going to look into the subsidiaries. their subsidiary right. companies, which would be Holland America? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, Carnival so owns a lot. They of own a lot lines, of cruise lines. So we'll talk about that later in another video. That's right. But the second part of the question is about Cuba, because the president is now threatening to roll back um, uh, pro-Cuba policies. Where you know we just got it just got opened up for travel to Cuba, and now he's talking because Cuba is connected with Venezuela and supporting them and the turmoil over there. Uh, the president is now threatening to roll back tra U U.S. travel to Cuba, so people are now kind of concerned with that. Mm -hmm. Will they be able to keep these Cuban cruises? We really don't. Day to day, know. people. Day to day. Right, and you know we're not. Our channel isn't about politics. Uh, we have a tendency to delete anything that happens to do with uh, any talk of politics. But this pertains to travel. Right. So religion um, and politics are usually off the table. But again, because it affects cruising to Cuba, people are concerned. So we'll see. And I'm concerned because yeah. I want to go to Cuba. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Uh, things go day to and day. And we'll keep you updated. That's right. Subscribe to our channel for the updates, and uh, on Facebook we always post stuff right. every day. As soon as much. we hear it, you'll hear it. So um, the next question comes from Brian, and Brian uh, wrote us and said, "Do you print your luggage tags at home, or do you let the cruise port terminal porters tag it for you?" Oh hell no! <laughs> when Kevin prints the e docs, he prints the luggage tags. And he and not only one tag, that's right. I print an extra set of that's tags. Right. That's right. So if we have two main pieces of luggage, each requiring a tag, that's two tags. He will print me four tags because I always bring a backup in case a tag gets lost from home to airport to the cruise ship. Now, I also want to expand on our answer to that. And that is in some cases, you will not have to print your luggage tags, and and you'll find out and you'll know. Uh, 
And, and the only reason I say this is when we went out of Seattle, uh, the Seattle um, port workers or they're not stevedores. I always forget what they're called. But Troubadours, stevedores, no, 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 portadores. No, no. The, the port guys, Luggage union, the, the union uh, people, yeah. they don't allow you to put, uh, they don't allow them to put the luggage tags on at all. Right. And what the cruise lines were doing was sending uh, pre-printed uh, luggage via tags mail. via mail. Uh, and there were like, uh, they had stickies on one side and we put them around and you, you they advised you not to put them on before you got, uh, before you reached the destination of Seattle, right. but you weren't allowed to put them on at the port. Right. They were very remember, specific remember, remember, with the instructions. We woke up in the hotel that morning, the day we were going to embark on the cruise, and it was on our checklist that before we left the hotel to get into the car to go to the port, we had to put those luggage tags on our luggage because once we got there and you know got out of the port, nothing could be done and some people watching this might be using a local travel agent and in most cases local travel agents will print out all of your documents yeah. and luggage tags and everything for you yeah. and have it ready yeah. so uh, so there you go right so uh thank you for joining us in today's uh, latest episode of q a hit that subscribe button that's right become a regular cruising with wheels family member here on youtube and where else are we on well we're on facebook twitter instagram and snapchat we already told them that at the beginning but i'd you love to tell them it again not reinforce it enough <laughs> but until next time we want to remind you what do no you know what i want to remind them send us your questions yes we can't do these videos these q a's without you that's right so until next time, remember, travel safe and cruise often.